Welcome back to Mask Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today we are going to smoke a murder hornet. So, the murder hornet by Room 101 Cigars. This is a Matt Booth specialty right here. And this is a very, very interesting cigar that I came across kind of during the last couple of months at my local brick and mortar shop. This has a really, really cool band where the Hornet itself has like this, uh, they have a, looks like an Uzi, and then they also have what appears to be some sort of like, uh, it almost looks like a, like a booklet or something that they're holding on there, or like they have a, a bag of cash, who knows? Like they're robbing a bank. But uh, it has the uh, Sakura leaf, the cherry blossom, <clears throat> right there, the Room 101 signature kind of, and then it says Murder and then Hornet. And past the band and the artwork on this, there's actually a really fun story to it. So the wrapper itself has this kind of um, almost, I wanna call it sickly, but sickly is a very kind of demeaning word. So we'll just call it, uh, it has a very rustic kind of look to it where it's very, very veiny, and the actual leaf itself has all of these beautiful kind of fluctuations in color, where it has like these dark colors that kind of blend into a lighter color. And that's because primarily this cigar is 100% Honduran Puro. So it is a pure Honduran cigar from the wrapper, the binder, and the filler. And the beauty of this is Room 101 in the early 2010s used a lot of Honduran tobacco in their blends, if not the majority. So this is kind of Matt Booth's homage, I guess you could say, to traditional Room 101 sticks. And I had the opportunity to pick up a few of these from my local brick and mortar shop. Shout out to Enfuego. Appreciate you, Char. Thank you for carrying the Room 101 line. This was part of the Limited Cigar Association Club's uh, monthly release a few months ago. And uh, I picked up quite a few during their release. LCA has a website that I'll link, but it's a partnership kind of association where they reach out to various master blenders and cigar manufacturers, and they come up with essentially three or four sticks every single month that they release to certain manufacturers and retailers that you know are in association where it's just kind of like a limited run of so many sticks. Um, this particular one comes in at five and a half by 44 Corona size, about about uh, $9.50 a stick and the amount produced varies. It really just depends on how long they're gonna do that run and how many retailers are gonna participate in the LCA's kind of uh, limited edition run. Another interesting pairing and another beer pairing for the channel, Innocent Gun, Gunpowder IPA Barrel Aged Scottish Ale. So Innocent Gun has been around for a while. I remember stumbling across the brand probably about eight years ago, I wanna say. Um, I was still behind the bar at the time and somebody had brought in their rum barrel aged Scottish ale. They did a bourbon, a rum barrel aged, all of these various Scottish ales that were barrel aged. And they were all really unique and fun and different. And it was right around the time that I noticed that a lot of different beer manufacturers and beer breweries were uh, we're starting to age their beers for a little while in a mixture of different casks to kind of share some of those notes. And I think that that's a, a fun kind of variation to certain beers that are out there. It kind of rounds them out, softens them a little bit. With this one, there are Cascade and Citra hops added to them to add that gunpowder IPA kind of hoppiness. And as the notes describe it, mango and grapefruit on steroids. Those are the tasting notes for it. And I think that they did a great job summarizing what this beer is. It does not taste like an IPA tremendously. It kind of tastes more like a pale ale, obviously scotch ale. But for an IPA, it's, um, it's not super bitter. It's not super hoppy. There's like, there's all this grapefruit. It's wild. There's all this grapefruit like right on the nose and when you taste it, the grapefruit changes into like this mango kind of tropical mix. It's just wild. And I think that that's gonna bode well for our cigar here because the first couple of murder hornets that I tasted, they had like this, they had this pepper note 
that towards the end of the Corona kind of changed into almost like a chocolate fudge sundae. So I think that the, the fact that the Murder Hornet kind of has some really smooth transitions to it are going to bode well with the beer. So starting off, the Murder Hornet, not really a ton of spice. Honduran tobacco for me always has kind of like this, it reminds me of graham crackers, but like not, uh, not like graham cracker just by itself, like dry graham cracker, but like Teddy Grahams that have been sweetened with sugar, if that makes any sense to anybody. It's my 90s kids reference right there, Teddy Grahams. But the Teddy Grahams start off with that Honduran tobacco, the bready notes of it, a little bit of spice, white peppery, um, and then as you move into the second third, there's like this orange creamsicle, orange Julius kind of flavoring that comes into play. And then by the end, we're like full on chocolate fudge sundae ice cream. With the beer, it doesn't start off initially as a complimentary pairing. There's a lot of stuff going on with the IPA, obviously with that grapefruit kind of mango tropical note probably from the Cascade and the Citra hops that they use, um, and then also barrel aging it as well. But as you smoke through more and more of the cigar, and this is a cigar where you really have to retrohale it and get it out of your nose too, because there's so many more flavors on the nose and the retrohale than there are just on the palate itself, especially when you're drinking it with like a, Fairly decent beer. I mean, this is 5.8%, so it's not too in your face as far as alcohol, but as far as flavor, it's got a lot of body to it. It's got a lot going on. The two of them, though, are fantastic. If you wanted to taste what Room 101 as a brand tasted like 10 years ago, uh, this is very reminiscent to me. I remember <clears throat> back in the days, first kind of Room 101 sticks that I got into. Um, and some of the ones that I have that I'll, I'll bring out, I have some of the Dorumas that, um, the Dorumas from like 2011, 2012 have a very kind of reminiscent quality as these murder hornets. And um, they are fantastic smokes. Very arid, very dry to start off. That graham cracker, Teddy Graham thing. But then as you move into like the chocolate and the orange and, and all that sweetness, they just, they really open up and get to be delicious. I'm gonna have more of the LCA smokes as I come across them and as I can grab two or three and really like dive into them. This is one of the very first LCA ones that I, I felt as though that I really needed to do a review on. Number one, because I'm a big fan of Room 101. Number two, because it's just an exceptional smoke that pays homage to where the brand started. Whereas, with like the Fruity Pebble leather thing and then the My Blue Heaven, which are all good cigars. They, uh, they're just kind of like little one-off things. And for me, it's like, uh, sometimes I'll feature that, but unless you guys reach out to me and you say that you want those to be reviewed, I really want to go with the ones that speak to me. And, and this is one of the LCA editions that really spoke to me. And I hope that it speaks to you as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you found value in watching this episode. Feel free to reach out to us on Instagram. Ask us to sign up for our newsletter where we feature more cigar, beer, and spirit pairings every single month. Thank you so much.